Man, this is such a good apple. But you know what's also good? This little trick that was well, not really a trick, but it's something cool that will save you a ton of time in the render process if you're working with a ton of images. Now, this works only for images for now. Let me show you. First of all, once you have all your images, in this case, we have 25 images, you right click and then you turn this into a new fusion clip. After you turn them into a fusion clip, this is what it will look like, just a normal fusion or a comp. It looks like a compound clip. You right click these and then open these in fusion. This is what it looks like right now. Let me show you. If I press play right now, you can see the nodes right here. They're, as you can see, they're, they're all lighting up. What that means is that every frame of these nodes is being read. Now, that got me thinking, what if there was a way to not have to re-render the image again every single time? And that is what I did. So, first of all, let me try to find... Okay, so I started building this collage tool with this in mind. And as you can see here, we have all these images. Now, this little node right here that you're not able to see right now, I'm going to deactivate these. I, these are already all the images positioned like that. In this case, I'm not using the 3D space, but in the actual tool that I built that I will show you, I did use the 3D space. So if I press play right now, you'll see how all of these do have to get processed like that for every frame. And it takes a little bit to go through every frame. Now, if we activate this little secret node, which is not that secret, let's take a look. Magic. Now, why does this happen? Well, using the time stretcher and then instancing it to every single media in that you have, since this is an image, we only need one frame, right? By using the time stretcher to just take that one frame and then using that, it basically bypasses that whole process of having to reread every single media in again. And that improves your render time or processing time by a ton. And that is basically the secret that I wanted to tell you about. But let me show you this pro tool that I built with that in mind. This is called the Mosaic Pro tool. Now, I built a mosaic tool or a 3D mosaic tool a long time ago. And people download these every day still. Now, maybe not every single day, but... Every other day, maybe there's somebody that downloads this because they find it and they were like, oh, I want to use it. Now, this is the better version of that. And by better, I mean a ton, of, a ton of more functions and processing power and the quality of the images as well. So let me just stop rambling and show you. The effect is called Mosaic Pro. Now, I'm aware that Patrick just released his version of a collage or a mosaic tool as well. And we did not tell each other about it at all. Um, it was just some sort of coincidence that we were just building these at the same time, something similar. So make sure to check out his video and see if that is something that you could find useful and then maybe decide. I'm going to be pricing this one at the same exact price. Now let's go over these. We have the 3D camera right here or the 3D space like that. And don't worry about this little white artifacts that I'll show you how to fix that in a little bit now if i zoom out a lot we have two repetitions now this is the first early release i guess so in the future when people get it and get more feedback i'll be able to add more stuff if you want to and we have here the first value that we can change which is called extended view so if we go to vertical then the repeat the repetitions show up vertically so then you can just become come closer and now it's a lot just a lot taller and the repetitions happen vertically as the name says i'm gonna set these up to horizontal by default and we have the window size which allows you to make all the media files smaller like that the windows are a little bit smaller so in case you want to do something like that that's pretty straightforward now we have the depth blur control which uses the 3d space for these so if I'm at this rotation, let's say right here, maybe to the other side, a little bit on the X, like that. I think that's good. If I activate these, we can see that we can see there's uh, some sort of depth 
blurring it and we have to go to the viewer options right here and activate the fusion overlay and we can use this x right here to move around and see where the focus is um positioning it itself now this is one of those things that the native depth blur was not completely working the way i wanted it to so i had to do a little bit of a workaround for this to work out and as you can see here you might have to go off screen a little bit uh to make it work properly and find the actual focus area right but once i figure out the native way to make the depth blur node i will be updating these so that it's a little bit more easy and that way you can just drag and drop um the values by using the picker that it has by default right so we have that depth blur right here and you have the options or the different values that you can change right here uh, like the depth of field and in this case it's key that you hold control when you move things because it's really 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 sensitive so if you go a little bit higher it just becomes too big already right so that's one of the things that you can use now the cool thing here is that you can turn this off and on so while you're working and creating your camera animations in the movement you don't have to turn this on and then after that's done you can turn this on and then animate that as well now if your camera is moving and you want to move these you do have the option to change the offset or add keyframes to it as well okay now let's go about the sections now each section here i do have the guide right here so that by default you know where everything is everything is linked pretty much perfectly i think already i did have to go around and tweak a bunch of stuff and mix them up because i got them messed up but it works now now here we have this section and the section is by now what i call section is this one is horizontal and then the other one is vertical and that's why we have these extended view controls as well the horizontal or the x value works when you have the horizontal view and the y value will work when you have the vertical view because we're just moving this section so if you want to animate this section moving for example like all of them moving at the same time and then you have some camera movements as well then you can do that that way they're not just still like that and then if we go to vertical then we will have to move this a little bit so we can see them see then i can just use the y and then we are changing that one or the section one right here now if for the sections you can also take these into account this is the first the middle one is a section one right here exactly in the middle maybe i should have added that in this graphic but maybe i'll update that in the future then we have the second section horizontally the third section horizontally fourth and then fifth now once you get used to this tool you probably won't have to look at this guide as much anymore so i just created these to be a drop down that you can close whenever you want to maybe i'll set these up to be a default um make these be closed by default all right then on the actual media channels what we have here is the media mode this means that for images this has to be set up to image if you're only working with images that way that fix that i showed you earlier will work and the rendering will be a lot faster now if you set this up to video then on that particular media then the, the rendering will be processing it as if it was just a normal video or a normal image without the time stretcher so it will be processing each frame so if you do have a video on that first layer let's say in the middle right here you want to change these to video otherwise it won't play the video at all it will basically just be freeze or frozen on the first keyframe now let's let me show you a little bit more about the 3d space that we have right here i'm gonna zoom out a little bit and rotate these a little bit more just to decide like that okay now all of these medias have the same uh, values in the sections as well like not values but things that you can change so i'm not going to show you each of them individually for the z which is the the c space basically here is that each media you are able to move in the 3d space so make these come closer to the screen or further away and the reason for this is that we have the extrusion where i added the extrusion tool as well so that for example you can set the extrusion to be Let's say one 
And that way you can create some sort of blogs and maybe have your camera be animating around the blogs as well. If you want to do that, have a little bit more of an, a little bit more dynamic display of your, all the images or things that you're working with. Now, the colors of these are all linked together for now. So if you change the color on this one, you will see that let's go to, let's say section three, media 14, which is 14 will be up there. So let's do 13, media 13. So we can see these a little bit better. If I move these a little bit higher, you can see that the extrusion itself has the same color on all of them right now. If you want to have different colors, I think I will be able to add um, a function for these as well, but it will be a little bit more complex and it will just require me to dive in a little bit and create some new connections for these, basically like 50 more nodes or something like that, prob probably. But it will be work, it, it will be doable. And then I will probably add here like a button that says, uh, Personal, personalized unique control or something like that. So if you if you if you set the extrusion depth, since the media actual channels has here uh, the Z channel or here the C position works individually, then you don't then you don't have to actually adjust the extrusion depth on each individual one. But I decided that I wanted to keep these option on the individual ones just for now, because maybe in the future, that will be something that you guys want to have different extrusion depths that are maybe floating like that. So it doesn't actually show like it's completely going all the way to the back like that. Right. So, yeah. OK, now. That is basically how the tool works. You can mod modify all those things and Let's see if we wanted to create some sort of camera animation. Well, all you have to do now is use the controls that you have right here. Let's say we want to start right here. Like that. Let's rotate these no, a little bit more. Like that. I'm going to create a keyframe for all of them just so that we can see how it ends up looking. Let's see if I turn these all the way to the opposite side. Maybe like that. Make these go a little bit closer to the screen. And then like that as well. And we, we don't need to rotate these as much. Okay, now we have the animations ready. I think we're gonna, I wanna animate the, the section one as well just for now. So yeah, we have three repetitions of all of them right now. So maybe try to keep it like that. And I'm going to actually set these up to be starting at that point right there, maybe. And then on the section three, I'm going to animate these to be like that. Go into the last keyframe. And I'm going to move these like that a little bit. Okay, now let's press play and see how long it takes to render these. It takes a little bit. But if we did not have that control for the images so that they're all in just um, image mode, this would have taken a ton more time. And after you're ready, you can actually just copy these and then render these in place an mp4 and that will be a little bit faster i think the movement is a little bit too fast right now but that's just because of the test that we have now one thing i forgot to show you how resource intensive is these well, if you take a look at these right now, it only took about nine gigabytes right now, supposedly in the fusion tab when it's working like that. After the animation is already done, it took only like nine gigabytes right now that's working with. So if you have a bunch more, so if you have like 32, this should probably work pretty fine. So yeah, that is it. That's one thing that I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention when I was recording the first time. Now, what is my plan for these? Since I have to get surgery on Friday, 
I'm not sure how long I will be uh, I will be like off without energy to work or anything. But I wanted to release these already. But my plan is to have and add some sort of like preset camera movements so that you have a ton more uh, drag and drop options for the camera movement. That way you don't have to be animating every single time, right? That's my plan in the long run. And maybe also add like a safe preset control so that you can click and then it saves the preset of the camera movement that you just created. So those are my plans for these that I have already established, I guess. But other than that, that is what the tool does. You can explore and see and play around with it a lot more. So if you think this is something that will save you a ton of time, make sure to check out the link in the description. I will add these to the Swally store and also the Lemon Squeezy store. So I'm going to have these. I'm going to have two links so you can get these from whichever you want. And that is it for this video. If you're working with a ton of images, make sure to use that tip that I shared at the beginning. And if you want to create cool 3D collage animations, then make sure to check out this tool that could help you save a ton of time. I'll see you in the next one here in Swati. Bye.